Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Santa's ornament and I'm gonna be sipping on my hot cocoa. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, Mars black, burnt umber, which I will call brown, fire red, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a nine inch paper plate and that I'll be using to draw a perfectly circle, circular ornament. And then I have a white piece of chalk for drawing and I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number four round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well, but that's what I'll be using. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint. And I'll even throw in the paper plate for you. So that's down there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, blue, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a medium to dark kind of blue as my base color. And I'm then going to, I'll use that as the base color, but I'm gonna make a gradient from right to left. I'm gonna have it darker on the right and lighter on the left. So I'll be adding black to my base coat over on the right and white to my base coat over on the left. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. I've magically pre-mixed my blue so you can see where I'm headed. So this is my I'll call it like a navy blue kind of color that I have pre-mixed. And what I did was I took my blue and I added a tiny bit of black to it. So if you got the kit from us, you can utilize all of your blue for this step. Um, but I caution you as you're adding the black into it that you just need to add a tiny bit at a time because the black can very easily take over and you can't reverse that black out of the blue. So you wanna just add it very cautiously. So I'm just gonna add a little tiny dollop on my brush at a time and you'll see if I can turn my palette the right way so you can see this. You'll see how quickly it will turn that, that bright blue into a dark blue and I just go a little bit at a time so that way I don't turn it too too dark and when you've got it as dark as you want it will turn a little bit darker as it dries so you can kind of mentally plan for that so if it's um, a little bit lighter than you thought it would be that's okay because it will turn a tiny bit darker as it dries and then I'm just going to mix it up with the rest of my blue here because I feel like I'm in a good in a good blue zone here so once I've got the color that I want what I'm gonna do is I have a whole bunch of it on my brush right now I'm gonna pick up a little bit more black on my brush at the same time and I'm gonna start on the right hand side of my canvas that's probably the only time that I'm gonna pick up black because again I know how easily the black can take over and I want this to 
not be totally black. So I'm gonna start over on the right hand side with the black and the dark blue on my brush. I'm going in an up and down vertical brush stroke. Now I'm just going to pick up my dark blue, no black, and I will get this to blend in with that darker section. And then I'm gonna utilize this dark blue for the majority of the center of my canvas. And then when I get over to the left hand side, I will be adding white to the equation. So when I do these, we're doing a gradient is what this is called from dark to light. As I do this, I like to kind of make sure I keep going back and forth with when I cross those two colors over. That way they will really blend together nicely and I'll have a nice even kind of transition as I'm going into my, my next kind of um, lighter tonal shade. And as you're doing this, I know for me, I will most likely do two layers on this background because I really like when I'm doing my gradients to have a nice smooth kind of look to them. And I am aware that while you're working with a, um, with acrylic paint, it can tend to be on the translucent side, depending on how thick or thin it is, you'll be able to see um, that canvas behind it in some areas because it has like a little bit of a streakiness to it. So a second layer will definitely help to eliminate that. And I also try to give these really long continual brush strokes, which will avoid what I refer to as cut marks. So if you see a, a a mark that like that that's made by your brush you can just kind of fully have a long brush stroke and that will eliminate those marks as I come in over to this left hand side I'm going to pick up my blue plus white on my brush at the same time and this is going to start to get me into the lighter zone and as I do this again I'm going to back into that previous section so that's going to allow them to really start talking together. Right now I'm just picking up white with my dirty brush. So I'm gonna have a really light section over here on the left hand side. So I, like I said, will probably do a second coat on this. I'll let it dry and then I will just kind of repeat that step from right to left and then um, when you get your background done, you might find that this is beautiful as it is for your painterly eye to like, and if so, then you'll just be ready to move on to the next step, which will be with our piece of chalk. But if you wanna go ahead and do a second layer, feel free to do so, and then you'll put your large brush away, you'll take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline of our Santa hand and the ornament. So I'm gonna be using my chalk and my awesome circle device, <laughs> but I do wanna forewarn you that you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry before the step. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So. If you do not have a nine and a half inch paper plate, that is totally fine. You can either freehand it or you can utilize a, you know, a size of a, a plastic lid or something else that is nice and circular. But I'm going to have, mine's about nine inches across. I'm going to be putting mine towards the bottom of my canvas. I'm about, I would say, an inch and a half to two inches away from the edge of my canvas. And I am about, I would say, up about two inches from the bottom. So somewhere in this vicinity, so it's a little bit off to the right. And then I'm just gonna take my piece of chalk and draw a circle around it, which makes it nice and easy for me to get a, a circle. You could also use like, um, I've utilized in the past, a piece of string wrapped around a pencil. And that's a great way to make yourself a nice even circle as well. Um, and then once you've got this done, you can get rid of this wherever you'd like to. And we're gonna draw the outline of the hand. So I'm gonna give you a couple of markers. You can just follow along and by the time we're done, we'll have something that resembles Santa's hand with his cool jacket on. So up on the top right hand side of the canvas, I'm gonna come in about two to three inches, make myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna come and find about the center of my canvas and come over to the left of that about an inch somewhere in through there. 
And then what I'm going to do is I am going to come over this left hand side of my canvas and come down about two inches. So that's going to be another mar marker in there, in through there. I'm going to use my pencil on this light area so you can, you can see it that way. And then I'm going to come down on this left hand side. If this is about halfway down my canvas, I'm about an inch, inch and a half below that. I'm going to make myself another little marker in through here. I'm going to make myself another marker right about here as well. So this is maybe about two and a half inches away from the edge of my canvas and it's a little bit higher than the top of my ornament. So this sits right about here is the next marker that I'm going to make. So we, what we've just done is we've kind of given ourselves an area for our hand and then we've kind of sectioned off various areas of the jacket and wrist area. So I'm going to connect this one to here with a kind of just like a little wobbly type of line. This is going to represent the exterior part of Santa's sleeve. So something like this. I'm going to connect here to here. This is just going to be a little bit of an arcing line in through here. Just a little bit arcing. And then what I'm going to do is when I meet here, I'm going to come past it just a little bit like that. This is, in essence, going to meet up with this marker up and through here. This is the exterior of the sleeve. So I'm going to bring this kind of down to towards the right hand side, just a little bit to going towards my um, ornament, something like this. And I'm going to just bring it around something like this, just to give myself that edge of the sleeve. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the inside part of the sleeve. So I'm going to come from here over, I would say about two inches, and then just give myself this little opening in through here where the wrist is going to go. We'll put my wrist on right in through here, which is going to be just a diagonal line like that. And then I'm going to put my hand on. So my hand is going to be kind of three fingers that are holding the ornament itself. So I'm going to be about, I would say about halfway between here and here over to the right. And I want to give myself kind of the, the center of the, the circle in through here is where my um, string is going to go. So if I come directly up from there, right about here, that's where my fingers are going to kind of clasp together in the center. And then I'm just going to give myself a little bit of an arc like this, and then a little bit of an arc like this. And that is all I'm going to be doing for my outline. You can certainly adjust it as much as you need to. We will draw the string kind of freehand. And then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our hand and our arm. I'm going to be using my large brush. I'm going to be using red, black, brown, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to be painting in a base coat for each one of these sections. So I'm going to start with red for the section of the sleeve that we've got going on in through here. I'm really just doing a solid coat at this point because we're going to be adding some textural elements to it later. So I'm just kind of getting on the um, base coat. I'm giving it a little bit of a ripply edge over here to indicate that it's some kind of cloth for the um, that he's wearing for the sleeve. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to do this next section on the inside of the sleeve. I'm going to be doing that with just black paint. So I washed and dried my brush. I reloaded it with just black paint and I'm bringing it all the way to the chalk mark. It's okay if you bump into the chalk mark or not. Whatever works for you is totally fine. We'll be um, painting over that edge anyways in a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, I want to, I'm going to be painting these three sections in with gray. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to use that little bit of black on my brush. I'm going to pick up some white and I'm just pre-mixing myself a medium kind of gray color. I'm going to use a little bit of brown as well. So I have white, black, and brown on my brush or in this little gray mixture that I'm going for that is creating just a medium gray color. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something that's going to 
be gray. <laughs> I'm just making mine of a medium tone. And then I'm gonna color in all of these sections. And again, I don't need any fancy brush stroke because this is just representing the base coat for all of these. So I'm just going right up to the edges, getting a nice coat on here. And I'm gonna do it for all of the sections. And if your gray is a little bit lighter or darker than mine, it's okay because when we go to do the details, we can adjust those colors into whatever shade that we would like. So I'm bringing it all the way to the edge here. I'm kind of cautiously watching out for this red in through here. I know that it's still kind of wet, so I don't necessarily want to have pink in my gray or red in my gray, so I'm going to wait a second here. When I go over to the edge where the black is, I can kind of bump that into the black a little bit. This is going to start the fluffy edge of my um, jacket as well as over here. I'm gonna put a little kind of dotted type of little edge along the side of the sleeve, and then I can do that along this bottom edge as well. This is going to add to the fluffiness of the white areas of the, um, of the sleeve. And then I'm just gonna color the rest of the part in. As I get towards that red area, I will do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of put a little bit more of the gray on my brush, and I am going to just kind of tap it on top of that red. And if I run into a little bit of wet red as, as I do this, that's okay. We'll be able to cover it up. And then we're gonna be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this in, you've got all these areas painted in with gray, you can wash or put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the outline of our ornament. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are my dark blue that I use for my background, white, and a little bit of water. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm in essence gonna give myself a nice clean circle and the water is gonna help me to just keep that paint kind of fluid in motion. As I do this, for me to get a nice clean edge, my hand usually is gonna sit inside my circle and I bring my brush in that direction towards the outside. So I'll be doing it that way along the whole thing. That's the way my hand works. Your hand might work some a, a little bit differently than, than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up blue, a touch of white, and then I'm gonna dip my brush in water and then I dab it on my paper towel. So you may see this line lighter or darker from one side to the other. Your line might be more blue or more light blue in some areas based on the combination that you have on your brush, and that's all, gr all good. It'll make it look nice and realistic. So I'm starting over here, and I'm just kind of going towards that edge and just letting my hand kind of work, excuse me, work, work its way around my chalk mark that's allowing me to, to get a nice clean edge. As I go in through here, if my blue is kind of the same color, then maybe this time I pick up a little bit more of the dark blue plus a touch of water. And that's going to make my line more visible on this side. And conversely, when I go on the other side, if I, if I go through an area, where you can't see it because it's a similar color, just pick up a little bit more white. So if you just add a touch of contrast to your, um, to your paint color based on what it's on top of, that's gonna allow you to see it a bit more. So I just kind of reloaded my brush and I'm just working my way around this circle. And again, if yours doesn't come out perfect, it's okay. I am, um, you, you have lots of details that we're gonna be doing on this throughout the throughout the rest of the painting so if it doesn't come out perfect at this point that's okay and you can even soften the edge as it is towards the inside of the um of the ornament I need to reload my brush so i don't run out of paint here just kind of going down this side into here i realize my hand is getting in the way but that's where it's got to go right now and then i'm going to go ahead and do this side over here i'll get these two to to meet in just a second here. Just wanna get my, my brush moving fluid in a fluid manner. For me, when my brush is moving a little bit faster, that's when I can get these smoother edges, especially in a circular type of motion. So this 
light area in through here. I just picked up a bit more water and I can get this light area to just kind of work its way in towards that globe. I know that I'm going to have, um, again, snow and all kinds of stuff inside this, this uh, sphere, this ornamental sphere or snow globe or whatever you want to refer to yours as. So again, if yours is not perfect, don't don't stress out over it because you're going to have lots of lots of details around it. And then we're going to be utilizing this. Uh, yeah, let's use this medium. Mm, let's use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to put the string on the ornament. So this is just going to go from this little crevice in through here and it's going to land right at the top of the ornament. I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using red, yellow, and white. And I'm going to start with just red paint to put it in place. I'm going to have mine in a little bit of a loop down at the bottom so it has something to hook onto the um, the topper ornament piece of the ornament. So I just kind of want to travel down something like this and then I'm going to just kind of give myself a little bit of a loop in this direction and I'm using my small brush so I can kind of have control on the width of this string. You might want yours to be bigger or smaller than mine. It's going to be totally up to you. Maybe you want some kind of different type of ribbon of sorts, but I'm just going to go for a nice generic one that will complement the colors on, on the rest of the painting. And I'm just having maybe one side in front of the other. So I've got that on there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and white without washing my brush. So I have red, yellow, and white on my brush right now. And I'm just going to do a little highlight down the left side of this um, little string. So I'm just kind of pulling down a a light line and this is going to give you a little bit of a three-dimensional aspect to it. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your string in here, don't worry about the bottom part because we'll be having a little um, hooky thing on top of that. But once you've got this done, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the snow on the ground or the ground in our globe, as well as the trees. I'm gonna be using my large brush, but I'm also gonna be using my small brush, which I didn't forewarn you about, but I'm gonna use my small brush too. So the colors I'm gonna be using are the pre-mixed gray that we had, brown and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with some of that gray on my brush and I'm gonna put the ground in um, in place. So I've got the gray on my brush and I'm going to just kind of tap it in with a little bit of um, a, just a dotting type of technique. I'm going to bring it up maybe about two, two and a half inches up here. I'm going to have it coming in a little bit of a curved line to indicate the shape of the bottom of the um, ornament or globe or whatever you want to call this. I wish I had in my head had in my head, is it going to be a globe or is it going to be an ornament? It's kind of like a globe ornament. So, And then I'm just kind of tapping this in. As I get towards the bottom, I don't need to bring this all the way to the bottom in a super clean line. So I am going to kind of skirt my brush maybe a little bit left to right as it's crossing over into that colored part that we did and then just kind of tap it in so it looks like it kind of merges in together and is just kind of a you know uh, the bottom of this ornament we'll put some white snow on it in a minute but this will just kind of get it started so it's a little transition down into that bottom and then what I'm going to do without washing my brush is I'm going to pick up some white paint just on the tip of my brush and I'm going to provide myself with the whiter or the lighter aspects of the snow. So I'm going to give myself this little kind of um, kind of a loose fitting type of platform 
of the the snow on the on the top of the of the floor of this snowy forest and again I'm kind of giving myself the information of what the globe is doing on the inside so it is kind of circular you can have some heavier snow areas if you want you can have some lighter spots and darker spots and this is again just kind of giving you that information as to what's happening on the floor of this beautiful forest and giving you some extra bits of light spots and dark spots to make it look a little bit more realistic. And then once you've got that on there, what you can do is I'm gonna put this larger brush down. I'm gonna pick up my little brush. And what I'm gonna do with my little brush is I'm going to be creating some trees. So I'm gonna start with just that gray paint on my brush. I'm gonna have like three trees, but you could certainly have as many as you want. I'm gonna have maybe one over in this direction. I'm gonna save some room for my little doggy. So I'm gonna have my doggy somewhere in through here. So just kind of be mindful as to where you're looking to have your, your animal. And I'm just gonna have some really kind of tall, slender type of trees. You can have yours as, you know, as big or as small as you want, just kind of placing them right now so I know what I'm gonna do. I just picked up a little bit of brown so I can see these um, at the bottom in front of my snowy area. So just a little bit of brown on my brush is gonna help me to be able to see the bottom edge of those. I'll branch them out a little bit more in a moment, but right now just kind of getting them in place so I can have, um, kind of my structure and my order as I go to as I go to build them a little bit more. Put a little bit more brown on my brush so I can see that right side or see the the tree trunk in front of the snow. And then once I've got kind of my idea of where I want them, now I can just start really just branching out, making them as full as I want them to be. Again, you can have yours large or small, whatever is visually appealing to you. I'm gonna have some more slender ones as they come in around the edge of the, um, of the ornament. And if you wanted to use a smaller brush, feel free to do so. If you want your lines to be bigger or you know of a different color, you can feel free to do that too. But I'm bringing some really tall, slender ones I like to, when I'm doing these more slender lines, you can dip your brush in, in the water a little bit. That's going to add fluidity to your brush, which will allow you to kind of get these more slender style lines. You may find that, you know, you're digging yours being on the wider side or you want yours to take on a little bit different of a shape. But if you do want to have those more slender lines, having a little bit of water on your brush will help you to do that and don't press hard. So that's probably one of the biggest, I know it sounds kind of obvious, but I think when we're going through these processes of doing these branches and stuff, we have a tendency to press really hard and that's going to give you the, the wider lines. So it's totally up to you, but once you've got enough kind of lines in through here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give myself a little bit of dimension in these trees. So I wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna put some white on the left side of the trunk. So that's going to give me a highlight on the left side. Because to me, the lightness that we have already um, incorporated on the left-hand side of the canvas dictates to the viewer where that highlight is going to be or where that light source is coming from and then you can just kind of go through and give yourself a couple of varying you know if you wanted a couple of light branches in through the whole tree you can certainly do that and or you can put darkness at the bottom so I just wiped my brush off picked up some brown paint I suppose you could pick up some black too I didn't say I was going to do that but I just picked up a tiny bit of black paint if your if your gray is um, on the darker side and you want it to go a little bit darker you can certainly add a touch of black throughout that or a darker shade of the gray throughout the bottom of that trunk and then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the hand and the wrist. I'm gonna be using my, uh, my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are gray, brown, black, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to 
I'm gonna do my little wrist first and I'm gonna provide it with a shadowy area as it's going into uh, underneath this sleeve and then I'm just gonna kind of give a little bit of a shadow at the bottom and a little highlight at the top to provide a, a touch of form to it and then in through here I've got to separate three fingers I've got a thumb a forefinger and a middle finger and then the little crease inside um, inside the glove <laughs> so we'll be doing that with highlights and shadows so we're gonna start here just so we can kind of get ourselves all prepared I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time I'm gonna kind of follow my edge of my sleeve in through here and I'm gonna give myself a dark area where the wrist goes into the sleeve and then I'm gonna just kind of rub this out and I'm gonna pick up a touch of my gray paint to get it to blend in. So I have kind of a nice gradient of sorts. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint on my brush, a little tiny bit of white paint, give myself a touch of a highlight up at the top and just get this to blend in. So we didn't do much, just kind of giving it a little bit of information as to where it goes into the sleeve back there. And then it's a little bit highlighted at the top. So now that you're all warmed up, <laughs> we're gonna put a touch of brown and black on my brush at the same time. You can even kind of wipe it off a little bit on your paper towel just to ensure that you don't have too much. We're gonna separate out the little in interior area up and through here. So I'm going to come a touch to the left of my string and then up where I may be about an inch, inch and a half away from the edge of my canvas. I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a dot. I'm gonna give myself a tiny bit of a curved line in through there, and then another little curved line in through here, meeting that little bit of a point. And then I'm gonna make this whole area in through here nice and dark. So I'm gonna take that black and brown the remnants that are on my brush and I'm rubbing them into this little crevice here. I think I want to touch more black so it's a little bit darker right inside this crevice because that's going to be the darkest area and then I'm just going to rub it up and I don't need this area to be to have a highlight in it because this is the interior of the hand. I think I even want it a touch darker than that so I'm just going to keep keep making it a little bit darker until I feel it's dark enough. I don't want it to go all the way black, but I definitely want there to be some good darkness in there just so it really reads as being inside the hand. So that works well for me. Then what I'm gonna do from this spot to here is I'm gonna give myself a curved line. This, I'm gonna still have the black and the brown on my brush and I'm gonna come out from here just a little bit and I'm gonna bring it back into this um, where the where the string is and I'm gonna do this is like the thumb in through here so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna take the remnants on my brush I'm gonna just kind of rub it into that and then I'm gonna just rub it out into the grayish area around it so right now I feel like I'm running out of paint on my brush I'm picking up more gray paint so this way I can get these two areas to transition into one another and to look like they're just merging from the gray to the darkness. And I, my light area is as I come up this thumb. So I'm still just got the gray on my brush right now, just making sure I have my edge the way that I want it to. And now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint to give myself this little bit of a highlight at the top of this thumb or the knuckle of the thumb somewhere in through here. And if you can get this to go a little bit lighter than that, you'll have the viewer understand that this is a separate piece than that is. So just a little bit lighter in through there. And then I've got to do these two fingers here. So I'm wiping my brush off of my paper towel. I'm picking up a little bit more brown and black. And I'm going to go from this marker in through here. And I'm just going to give myself a curved line, which is going to separate these two fingers. So you might want yours I'm going to have this finger looking a little bit bigger than this one in width. So this one looks like it's just overlapping that one a bit. So that's going to be a judgment call on your part if you want to see it a little bit more or less. But this one I'm having a little bit bigger than that one. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that paint and on the shadowed finger 
which will be the, the farther one away. I'm gonna take the remnants on my brush and just kind of rub it into that surrounding gray. And you can have this bottom part pretty darn dark. I'm actually adding a bit more black and brown to my brush just to make sure that I've got this bottom of this finger pretty dark as well as the bottom of this finger because those are definitely down at the bottom and they would not have a ton of light on them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I've got these all nice and colored in, picking up some more of my gray paint. Just putting a little bit of a dirty, a dirty tip to this finger in through here with a little bit of that brown, making sure that I've got the entire fingers painted in here. And then I'm gonna put my highlight up here on the top left-hand side. So mostly up in through here. So it looks like, again, this is the outside of the finger and that we're seeing a whole bunch of the um, the depth of it or the volume of it. So just gonna put a little bit up in through here as well. And this is one of those steps that you may find that you wanna work on it a little bit. It you know If you do it too light, you may want to add a bit more gray. Just keep layering it until you feel that you've brought it into a nice 3D realistic kind of way if you want it to look that way. And I think I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more white in through here. The area that you have the most lightness on will be the area that looks like it's popping out the most. So you can just kind of keep fiddling with the intensity in there. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done and it is as dimensional as you want it to be, you can put this medium or put the medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the sleeve in through here. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using black, red, brown, gray, and white. And if I, I'm not gonna use any other colors. Those are the colors I'll be using, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start with a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush plus red. So a little bit of black and red on my brush. I'm gonna put a big shadow in through this area in through here, so I'm just gonna kinda of tap in this really dark paint. I don't want it to all go black, so if you're finding that you know, you're know you going about this and you're like, oh my God, I can't see any of the red, just wipe your brush off on your paper towel, maybe even give it a good squeeze, pick up more red, and then that way you can kind of get those two to work together to give you this shadowy type of appearance in through here. And then once I've got my shadow on in through here, then I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel again and just pick up red and give myself this textured kind of look going up the rest of the, the little piece of sleeve that I have in through here. So you might find that you want yours to be lighter or darker than mine or whatever value you would like yours to be in is totally fine, just bringing it all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to wash and dry my big brush and I'm gonna go in for this area in through here. So I'm gonna start in, in this shadowy interior of the um, sleeve. I washed and dried my brush. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my gray plus a little bit of black. So an itty bitty bit of black and an itty bitty bit of gray. Not a lot. I'm even going to wipe it off on my paper towel. I just want there to be a little illusion of the bottom of the interior of this sleeve having a get catching a little bit of the light. So by providing you with just a little bit of gray at the bottom of that sleeve, it'll give you that dimensional element that this in fact is closer to the viewer and is catching a little bit of the light. And then without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a touch of brown and my gray, and I'm going to finish this area in through here. So I want a little bit of a shadow down in through here. So brown and gray is where I started to give myself this textural shadow underneath here. And once I've got this on, I'm coming all the way to my edges. Once I've got this darker area kind of established in through here, I'm gonna start picking up just white 
on my dirty brush and this is going to progressively get my sleeve to go lighter and lighter as it goes up that up the um, towards the top of the canvas and I'm just using this dotting stippling type of technique I'm allowing myself to kind of overlap some of these um, some of this texture so it really allows it to look like it's got some volume to it and I'm bringing it right to the edge of here um, and you might find if yours is going all the way white really quickly on you that you want to kind of back off and maybe pick up some of that original gray so that way you reserve the lightest of the light to be up at the top of the of the sleeve. I want to put a little bit of fluffiness in through here too so I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gray plus a little bit of white on my brush at the same time just so I can give a little bit of fluffiness over on this inside edge in through here. Don't need to do a lot, just a teeny tiny bit just so I can have something other than a solid color of gray in through there. And then I just picked up some more white to provide this really bright area up in through here. And then you might also want to let it dry for a minute and see if there's any additional vibrancy that you want to add to it because it will turn a little bit different as it dries and then once you feel that you've got it into that brightness that you want of course the brighter that you have some areas the more they're going to look like they're popping out to the viewer similar to what we did to the hand so you just fiddle with it all you want until you've got it as bright as you want and then we're going to be switching to our tiny brush for the next step so if I can ever stop doing this sleeve and put my large brush away, we will switch to our small brush for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be doing our dog, our bird, our shadows and our snow <laughs> inside the falling snow inside our ornament globe I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using brown yellow white black and that might be it if I use any other colors I'll let you know so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first start by doing a base coat for my dog while that is drying I'm gonna go ahead and do my bird and then we'll come back and do our other little details so I'm going to do just a generic kind of golden retriever type of colored dog for my dog, but you could certainly depict yours in any color you want. You can have a black animal or a brown animal. I'm going for a golden, golden retriever. So I have pre-mixed myself a kind of a tan type of color. How I got to this was I used brown, yellow, and white. And I used, a, I would say, about equal parts of each. But once you do that, you'll probably want to tweak it a little bit. So, like, that's a little bit too light for me. So I'd add a little bit more brown and maybe a little bit more yellow to get it into the color zone that I'd be looking for. So you can certainly make yours into whatever color you'd like. But once you've got your desired shade, I'll guide you through some basic shapes to get a cute little shape of a dog. And then you can adjust it to whatever style dog that you'd like. So I'm going to start by just doing um, a little oval, the top of an oval type of shape. So it's going to be like a rectangle but kind of oval at the top. Mine's going to be maybe about, an I would say, an inch and a half tall. I'm crossing mine over the um, line of the of the snow but of course you could certainly make yours whatever way that you want and that's going to be kind of the main shape of the body then in order to get it to look a little bit more realistic I'm going to puff out a little bit on the top left hand side to make it look like a little bit of a chest and then on the bottom right hand side to look like the back butt hip area so something like this so just little bump outs on the top left and the bottom right and then I'm going to go ahead and put a little circle on my head for my head so I've got my circle in this area you could again make yours larger or smaller once I have that circle there I don't want it to look like a bobbly head so I'm going to close off the edges of the neck like that I'm going to put on a couple of cute little ears so just bump out a little bit of a ear in through here and then a little round part in through here for that 
particular year. And of course you could put a little tail on or whatever else that you would like. I think I might make this a little bit wider because I think that my chest got a little bit too big on me. So something like that will work. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put my little birdie on. So I'm going for a little cardinal in my tree, but you could again make yours whatever um, style of bird that you would like. So I'm just going to go for a little tiny egg type of shape for the body. I think I'm going to put a tiny bit of white with my red so my red doesn't um, be too see-through. So a little white and red on my brush. I'm going for this little egg type of shape for the body. I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny little tail. I'm going to have the tail kind of crossing over on this side of the tree. I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny little head in this right in through here. So just a little tiny circle on top of that head, a tiny little beak, and this is going to be a cardinal. So I've got this little um, crown on the top of the head. It's a really tiny bird. And I think now I'm, I'm doing something on the fly here because I don't like that branch right in front of the nose. I just picked up some dark blue to get rid of this branch right here or to disguise it a little bit. He's taken away from my bird. So you can do that too. Get rid of any branches that you want. So once I've got him on there, I'm gonna let him dry before I do the little details. I'm coming back to my dog to do my details on my dog. So I washed and dried my little brush. I'm gonna put some brown and black on my brush to separate out the um, the legs and give it a little bit of shape. So if this is the hip in through here, I'm going to just put a little bit of my black and my brown in through here just to get that area to be separate out. I'm going to put a little bit more black and brown to separate out this front leg in through here. And of course, I'm working on a really small dog here. You might find that you want yours to be bigger or, you know, to give, take up a little bit more shape. I'm going to blend that darkness on this left leg with some of my dog color. So I just picked up a little bit of my dog tan color and you can do the same thing on the right. So really what I just did was separate it out that front leg and then this is kind of like the underneath of the chest kind of part. And if you need to do any little modifications there, you certainly can. I'm going to use a little bit of that brown to um, separate out the head. Maybe a little bit of brown and black so we can see it. So less is more. I'm not really using a whole lot of paint on my brush. Just kind of getting these little shadows in here to allow for my dog's face and head to emerge. So just putting a little bit of brown up in through here to give that, um, that face to kind of stand out a bit. A little bit of brown and black is going to give me a tiny little cute nose in through right about here. Maybe we're gonna have a little eye in through here, a little eye in through here, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of shadow in my ear like that. I'll put a little bit of highlight on that face in a minute, a little shadow in through here as well. I'm going to um, wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a little bit of white and my tan to give myself a little bit of a highlight on this chest area. So white with my tan is going to give me a little bit of highlight on that chest just to give you a little bit more shape to the dog. And I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white for the head. So I've got white on my brush. I'm gonna give a little bright spot on the top of that head. And this is gonna give you the shape of the muzzle as well. So I'm gonna bring this right down between those eyes like this. And I'm also gonna put a little bit around that muzzle in through here. So just give a little a little arcing kind of line. Oh, I forgot his mouth. <laughs> I got to put I got to put the doggy's mouth on here in a second too. Can't forget that. Um, and of course, this little white could certainly help to give you the tops of those um, of those ears as well. I'm going to put a little bit of brown on my brush. This is where the control of a tiny paintbrush <laughs> really helps out when you're when you're doing stuff like this. So if you can, there we go, a little tiny mouth in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some shadows 
of course you could certainly you know sit here and fiddle and tweak this all you want if you want yours to have any more characteristics in it feel free to just kind of keep fiddling with that but that's that's the majority or the the gist of it and then I'm gonna it, I'm thinking my light source is off to the left so I'm gonna be using black and brown to put some shadows I'm gonna have a shadow from my trees as well as my dogs so I'm just gonna kind of put this dark color down the bottom of this tree and then just kind of pull it out so you don't have to do a whole heck of a lot because this again is the inside of a of a globe <laughs> so we don't have to have it really you know photo realistic or anything but if you can kind of get these shadows to you know go in a similar direction and have them kind of taking on a similar look that would make it make sense I, I guess and you can have them long or short whatever whatever works for you I'm putting just a tiny bit more black at the bottoms of these trees just so it really you know looks like the the back side is being shadowed a bit and of course you can fiddle with that all you want maybe a little bit more darkness right underneath my little puppy and through here maybe he's you know kind of stuck in the snow a little bit and of course feel free to for, to tweak those all you want maybe a little bit more on that face it's hard to stop when you're doing these cute little details because they're so much fun to to incorporate i'm going to go ahead and finish my little birdie here so i'm going to use yellow and white on my brush to put a tiny little beak on my bird and of course these are just itty bitty tiny little details so just a tiny little yellow little beak on my bird wiping and uh, wiping my brush off on my paper towel picking up a little bit of black because these birds have a little black mask behind their beak so just incorporating a little black mask behind that beak and then I'm gonna paint I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm gonna pick up some more red because I want to make sure that my bird isn't see-through so I'm just adding a little bit more red and if you felt that you wanted any more detail on your bird you certainly could I'm just really going for just the impression of these little tiny cardinal birds but you could certainly make yours as realistic as you want and then I'm going to put some snow in here so you can use either your small brush and just do a million tiny little dots throughout here if you wanted to I like to have mine all kind of in different sizes little ones and big ones and you know fluffy ones or oh, and or you could also utilize your big brush so if you take your um, your big brush I'm just washing and drying it and put a teeny tiny bit of white paint on the end of it and then kind of dab it on your paper towel you can take it and just flick it and this is going to give you a thousand little pieces of snow or stars you just want to keep your brush close to the surface so you don't get too many flicked in areas that you might not want to and then you can put as many as you want and then we are going to be utilizing our small uh, let's use our medium brush for the next step so once you've got all of these cute little details on here you can put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're finishing our ornament I'm going to be using my medium brush but you might find that you want to use your large brush and your small brush or your medium brush <laughs> so I think I'm going to do it most of it with this medium brush but if I switch I'll let you know so what we're going to in essence do is put what I'll refer to as the glaze on the outside of the ball which will allow it to have a lot of form it's going to look like kind of hazy on the outside and then we'll do the little um, ornamental piece at the top and then we're going to come back and put some reflective colored swipes throughout the um, throughout the reflection or the exterior of the globe so I'm going to be using my medium brush I'm going to start with my gray paint plus water on my brush so I'm going to pick up some gray paint and wipe it off <laughs> and then dip my brush in my water and then tap it on my paper towel so now I have watered down gray paint on my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it along this exterior and then fade it into the ball itself so you may find that you want yours to be brighter or 
more transparent than mine, whatever works for you. You can bring it right on top of here. I'm gonna re-wet my brush with a little bit of water. I did not um, dry it or wipe it off. I just put a little bit of water on my brush and I will continue to put water on my brush to get this to be transparent or see-through. It will look um, more white or lighter when it has a lot of water in it. So just know that when it dries, it will take on more of the underneath colors. So if you wanted to, you could certain, actually I think I'm gonna pick up my large brush right now, just so I can get this to kind of blend out a little bit more. I just picked up my large brush. I didn't put anything on it except for a little bit of water. So I have a tiny bit of water on my brush just to get this to blend out a little bit. And that way I, it, I'm ensured a nice kind of smooth gradient of this transparent glaze that I'm putting along the outside. And I will go ahead and do it on the right side as well. And you can certainly, if it didn't go well for you, just pick up some water and kind of, you can kind of scrub it off or rub it off. I'm gonna go ahead and go up this right hand side. I am gonna to continue to use my large brush to go up this right hand side. So just a little bit of gray and a touch of water on my brush is going to allow me to get this transparent type of glaze along the exterior, giving me like a haze on the outside of the, um, of the globe. And I'm just kind of continuing to work it until I feel that it is everything I had hoped it would be. And then once I've got it where I want, I'm gonna um, put this brush down. I'm gonna go in for my little decoration part at the top. So small brush, I'm gonna pick up some black paint and I'm gonna give myself uh, uh, a design that's gonna just be made up in my head. You can have yours, your design work whatever way you want, but I'm, I'm gonna have mine kind of like a little claw type of um, decorative element on the top. So I wanna have the um, center point in through here and it's gonna come over this left side and it'll go behind the right side. And then once I've got it to meet my ball, then I decide what I want to do with it. So maybe I'll just have it kind of skirting out on the left and the right, reloading my brush. I've got to get this to close off right in through here. So I'm going to get this to close off right at the top of the ball. And then I am going to give it just these little like pointy, spiky, decorative type of um, uh, edges to the clasp is or edges to the hook I guess would be the right way to call this <laughs> and then once I've got that on there what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a highlight so I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel I'm going to pick up a touch of white and I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a highlight up on this top left hand side and then you can if you want to actually I'm going to pick up some of my dog color my tan color and just give a little bit of an extra kind of bit of a shine over here on the left hand side and of course you can have yours looking whatever way you want but if you can get it a little bit lighter on the left and darker on the right that's going to make it look like it's telling the story of where that light source is coming from and then I'm going to wash my brush because I want to put some reflections within the exterior of the globe. So I would like to have my hand or Santa's colors reflected in here. So I'm gonna be using red, I'll use white, I'll probably put a bit of a shine across the front part of the globe in through here and then over on this other side. Maybe I'll put a bit of black, maybe I'll put some more red. So it's really a process of the ball of glass is gonna reflect any colors around it. So I'm gonna start with a bit of white and water on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a um, reflective type of shine in this front area in through here. So a little bit of water plus white, and I'm gonna bring this section maybe down in through here. So the trick to getting glass to shine is just to have it telling the viewer what it's reflecting and what what its shape is and how shiny it is. So 
what you, you, you want to make sure that it's translucent so you can see the stuff underneath it. But if you can um, explain to the viewer what it's shining or reflecting around it, that's going to make it look realistic. So I've got that on there. I'm digging that. So now I'm going to start adding maybe my reflection from his um, sleeve. So I'm going to bring this down in, I would say, maybe a diagonal type of way like this. And then I'm going to just kind of pull this in my curved um, direction of my ball. So I've got this kind of coming down in through here and just bringing this down in the curve of the ball. I, I don't want to bring it in, bring it down in any other direction because that's what the, re the way that the reflection would be traveling. So once I've got that on there, do I want white anywhere else? Maybe a little bit from, from the um, fingers, maybe a little bit in through there. Do I want white anywhere else? Maybe a little streak or two here, maybe a little one over in through here. So when I have the color on my brush, if I can find another place that I might want it, that's great. So now I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up some red. So wash my brush, pick up some red. I'm going to have some red over here on this left hand side to tell the story of his jacket. So we've got some red over in through here. And again, it doesn't have to be a mirror image. You're just reflecting stuff that, that is surrounding this ball. So any little flecks or bits of information, I can reflect this little guy over here in my in my ball. So I can just kind of put a little red redness in through there. Maybe we've got a little little bit down here from up here or from the string or something. Then I'm going to pick up uh, a little bit of black. So I've got black here in here and up and through here. So I can do little kind of streaks of black if I wanted to. That would definitely tell tell a nice story. Maybe I've got that coming down in through here. I think I'm gonna wash my brush because I think I had a little bit of extra red on there. So just a little bit of that darkness coming down in through here. You could even utilize some of that dark blue in, in some of these areas. Maybe we've got a little bit of darkness up in through here. And then I would just kind of keep, I mean, I'm, I'm digging this the way that it is. Maybe, maybe a little bit of darkness right in through here. Um, but what I would suggest you do is just kind of get them on there, step away from it, see if there's any additional kind of markings that you want to portray. Maybe a little bit more white down in through here from the tree or something. Yeah, I like that. And then we have one tiny little step left to go. So once you've got all of your little reflections and you feel like you've got your ball as shiny as you want it to be, you can put your medium brush or whatever brush you were using away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I normally sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be signing mine with my small brush. I'm going for some black paint on this one. And I sign mine with my initials. You could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very festive image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.